okay hello and welcome guys today we are going to see how we can build dynamic web projects in eclipse emphasizing here or giving a brief overview of servlets and jsp so let's see here uh, we have this welcome screen as we open the eclipse now let's change the perspective here we need to change it to java e perspective so we can choose this from here java e and hit ok now just remove this welcome screen so now what you get is a lot of palettes that are required in order to build a web application using this IDE environment. So here we have the pro file option, file menu, click on it, new and choose dynamic web project from the list. If it's not available in the list as you are using some other perspective, you can choose any time the specific web application or any application you want to make with the help of this IDE. So go to other option and here you type dynamic and you can see in the list you get dynamic web project Hit next then you need to specify a project name as i'm making a project here web app hyphen zero one uh let's choose here the target runtime as we have configured apache tomcat as a web server in our eclipse already so we can choose it from the list if it is not available here we have the option to click on the new environment and then configure it as per the requirement of the application like you can configure any other server if you have available in your machine uh, now the dynamic web module version what exactly it is it is uh, like specifying the which module version or the web compliant you want to use for your project for 2.5 we are going to use here if we start using 3.0 we will get features like annotation based configuration for mapping of our sublet and other features that are available but for now it is classical approach and we should use 2.5 for making use of web.xml that is our default dd deployment descriptor for application and we can make all the sublet mapping and rest of the filters and things will be configured in our in the xml format in our web.xml file okay for configuration we leave it blank as we don't want any kind of framework to be used like for example apache cxf or access or if you have jsf or any other framework configured or inbuilt into your eclipse id you can make use of for now leave it as it is okay hit next here it is the src folder which is getting displayed you can leave it as it is and hit next here the context root of the application you can leave it as the same as the name of the application or you can change if you wish content directory to be web content and you must check this checkbox generate web.xml deployment descriptor if you won't check it you have to manually create a file web.xml and specifically from 3.0 version we generally don't require this web.xml as most of the configuration we can do on the fly by using the annotations so for now let it be and click finish okay uh, so what you see in the project explorer palette we have web application project generated by eclipse along with all the required necessary dummy files and the structure of the project is built by eclipse so let's explore it one by one this is the deployment descriptor shortcut which has been generated here in the web contents web inf directory web.xml to access it uh, easily we uh, eclipse provides this deployment descriptor shortcut over here when you double click on it you can see that uh, web.xml file has been generated with the minimal configuration required this is a design view which you can see here it is easy to access and manage using the design view for generating the xml and working on and when you go to the source view anytime you can type in or key in every required component or element of this web xml configuration so see here next thing is java resources where we will generate our servlets or java classes entity classes database specific classes or any kind of business logic classes you require you can create here in the src folder so let's begin here application with creating a servlet so before creating servlet i require a package so right click on it new and choose your package hmm. type in the package name like com.srk.pkg okay click finish so we have a package ready for our application right click on it for the new and if you wish you can create a plain class and from that class we can extend further with the http sublet interface and further we can build a sublet or we can choose the sublet option from the list that will build quick sublets in our uh, web application that is a feature of this web uh, eclipse id that lets us build servlets and jsp based application very quick and immediately so let's choose it here let's give a name to the servlet like i call it my servlet okay so what exactly the thing is when we choose this option the default methods and the url mapping and things will be configured in the web.xml by eclipse you don't have to do it manually this will save time and it will help in uh, fast application development or rapid application development here you are mapping and thing we can change which we will discuss later so hit next leave it to default and not for, uh, you must not forget to check this do get and do post by default it will be checked these are the two 
method that have been um, already checked and it will be by default generated as a dummy structure by Eclipse IDE and these are the two most uh, frequently used or you can say the uh, way in which we can submit the form are there two methods to uh, get method and the post method and whenever a re request comes for a servlet for accessing some resource or for uh, making any kind of uh, work done by this servlet we have only two choices of get and post method for a form and that we have specified or we will use it in the uh, JSPs. okay so let it be do get and do post be generated click on finish and here you will see a servlet class will be generated this class is normally like a java class but it is extending http servlet and it has got do get and do post method with two parameters HTTP servlet request object and HTTP servlet response object. So let's do some task over here in the body of this to get method. Like uh, I simply create an object of type print writer and using the response object I invoke get writer method. Okay, what exactly I'm trying to do? This response is a object of type HTTP servlet response, which gives us a reference to the client's browser where we can write some content and display it on the user browser when a specific request comes for this sublet. Print writer is displaying some kind of error over here. It is due to we haven't made an import for java.io package in which this print writer classes. So let's scroll up and import this java.io package. So we have the java.io and we can see this underlining or this error has disappeared. So next what we need to do, let's print something on the screen. So we invoke the print method from this print writer object out and let's write some message like hell at least okay dot 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 finish so for now we have just simply simply created a servlet whenever a request comes to, for this servlet using the get method this particular body of the do get will be executed as a result of which the response object which has been sent by the browser will give us the writer and using the print method we write something on the browser back to the client okay so let's move to the next thing let's save for now uh, the things we have done over here next is Coming to this web content, we need to create a JSP page in order to provide a view front end to the user. Generate JSP file here, new JSP file, and let's name it something like uh, index. Okay, hit next, and it is the default template option being provided by the Eclipse. We can choose the default and just click on finish. So, why I named it index? There is something behind uh, there, uh, there is some reason behind it. Let's explore it. When you come to this web.xml, you can see there is a list of welcome files which has been specified here like index.html, index.jsp, default.html and jsp. What are all these? Uh, exactly the thing is, uh, whenever a web request comes from a client for on the web server for a resource on a directory or on a folder, whatever you understand with. So in that web directory, if the client hasn't specified a specific resource name or a specific file name, these are the list of file name that will be set in the directory. And if it is available, it will be simply rendered back to the client. But if these files are not available or you haven't made or created these files in the directory and user doesn't specify the specific file name or resource name in for searching in a directory then 404 error will be written like for example suppose you make a request for www some example.com and in this case you have just made request for the root directory of the web server you haven't specified the file name so what happened the server will start searching through the specified welcome file list inside that www.someexample.com root directory and if one of this file get matched over there or is available it will be rendered back to the client or if it is not available 404 will be available similar is the case with other directories also will happen so we have named our file index.jsp so in order to uh, execute the application when user is not specifying the file name for the directory uh, this particular index.jsp will be searched and will be serviced back to the user Okay, let's see here. We didn't made it made any change, but we have just by mistake uh, deleted that HTML. So it was asking for changes need to be saved. Okay, we did did it. So let's start here. Uh, let's print some message like uh, here. Welcome to JSP. Okay, horizontal ruling, and then creating a form here. Form action I'm specifying here as let's say my sublate. Okay, and then I create a button over here. Input type equals to submit and then value equals to send what does this mean this is a form okay and this is in submit button when you click this submit button the form will be sub submitted and the action which we have specified will be the result 
that need to be executed on the server and given as a back to a response in the response to the client so this action will be executed and its name i have specified is my sublet why my sublet why not anything else or why not my sublet dot java or my sublet dot class or anything there is a reason behind it the thing is that in the deployment descriptor web dot xml you can see here as soon as you have created this sublet a mapping has been done in our deployment descriptor that is in web dot xml you can see explore it that this sublet description and display name are optional we can uh, we can remove it anytime if you don't require or we can leave it it is generated by default by the eclipse id the main important thing is here that the sublet name is my sublet that is being mapped to the my sublet or java how exactly you can see in the sublet class it gives you the full qualified name for what this or which this uh, which of this class is being referred by this my sublet com.srk.pkg which was our sublet which contains my sublet dot java which will be compiled into web inf classes folder inside the same hierarchy of folder com srk pkg my sublet dot class that class is being mapped at runtime by this name my sublet and if you ne need to execute this class on the server you need to go for the url pattern which is being specified over here that my sublet inside this class in this package is being mapped as a url pattern my slash my sublet so whenever a client need to access this my sublet at any time on the web server he can directly just invoke this my sublet by typing it in the browser or if we are making request through form as we are doing here in the index.jsp we are just writing the name of the sublet so this this is it and we have created a simple jsp and sublet to show the interaction between the two and just a simple web application that will show you the effect when we get started with it so now let's start publish this application the web server select the web application right click on it run as on server hit next this web application is being configured finish and you have to wait for a moment while it get published on the server and the result will be displayed on the internal browser as i have configured it by default for the eclipse id this is our default browser that will be in home okay so <coughs> here it is the web browser you can see welcome to jsp uh, there are some typos here welcome spelling is not correct so we'll correct it later so we click on it is send button and see the servlet get written back in response hell and list okay so you can see this hell and list is getting back received to the client as a result of the execution or the submission of that form so now a few more thing look over here it's not necessary that we always go for this process like we just click or start with the browser any browser if you have internal browser external browser also http server is running colon slash slash local host port 8080 and web app Zero 01 this is the context root of the application that we have uh, configured during uh, creation of the application so hit it and you get it okay it's not necessary that you click on the send button and go to the servlet you can write there my servlet and you can see the result of the servlet how exactly i've invoked it this is all depend on this web.xml td we have configured it now let's change it like make it web my servlet dot do save it close this browser and you need to republish the application although it is automatically republished but just for the confirmation finish it and this time if you try to invoke it by the uh, by clicking on the button uh, see you will not be able to get the response from the servlet as there is no resource mapped by the name my servlet not we have a resource that is mapped by the name my servlet dot do so hit it and you will get an error okay so this is http status 404 because my servlet is nothing that has been configured any resource not neither static or dynamic that can be found in the server or uh, if you type in here dot do you can see the result it is okay so we require to make certain changes in our jsp also like we have mapped our my servlet class by the mapping of my servlet dot do so in jsp also here in the form action we need to specify the same my servlet dot do so save it again once again i'm going to restart the application run as on a server and hit on finish you can see this time again <coughs> the application will be invoked and we can just click on the send button and we get the result my servlet dot do okay what about this question mark i'll explain it later in the coming series like this question mark is used as after this question mark we have a set of key value pair that is known as query string this which is used to pass on the values from the client end to the server end or it is used to mainly exchange the values among the web resources specifically in case of form we submit the values and those are being going to be evaluated computed or are going to be processed by the web server using some dynamic servlets or kind of technology so we have this question mark left as a blank we will explore it later okay thank you for watching it and this
uh, this is for today thank you